Here are a few essential things that I wish I knew before I started healing in FF14. Let's jump right in. Before the tank starts pulling, I would recommend popping sprint so that we are able to get the full value of sprint as it is 20 seconds out of combat and 10 seconds when used in combat. This way it will help us stick to the tank so that the quicker we stop, the quicker we can start casting our spells using our heals or DPS in general. Another thing I would do is if we are on white mage and astrologian, apply your single target regeneration over time. On white mage it is the regen spell, on astrologian it is the expected benefit. This is useful to be applied to your tank right before he pulls the mobs or the go-to spell you use if the tank needs healing. For 8-man content, we can use Medica 2 or Aspected Helios. However, I would recommend against using Medica 2 or Aspected Helios for single target healing, especially under level 85. You should only use this when there is downtime, which could be during in between pulls, when you're moving from pack to pack, or when the boss disappears and you're not doing anything at all. But it is the go-to spell you would want to use when there are more than one target that we requires healing. Similarly, on Sage, you need to have your Cardia on the main tank, and on Scholar, you should have your Fairy summoned. As well as right before the tank pulls, we should apply our Shield spell. For Sage, it will be Eucrasian Diagnosis for single target, and Prognosis for party-wide. On Scholar, it will be the Alloquium, and Sucker for party-wide. We can actually use Alloquium on a single target, and then use Deployment Tactics, which will then spread the shield to everyone in the party. This way, everyone will gain a more potent shield over just using Sucker. Keep in mind that if you do apply these skills too close to a pack of mobs or a boss, we will end up getting the aggro, but as long as we are close to the tank, it is usually not an issue, as the tank can easily use an AoE cleave to regain the aggro immediately. How much should you heal? This heavily depends on the instance we are currently in, as the damage dealt by the boss or mobs will vary a lot, as well as the gear we have and the tank's gear for that specific instance. It is okay to overheal especially when we are new to that specific content, as over time, we will gain more experience and have a better feel of how much our heals do, how our mitigation works, and a better idea of the job we're playing. Our goal is not to keep everyone topped up at all times, but to keep them alive. As long as they're alive and you know they will not die, we have basically fulfilled our role and can safely DPS. Mitigations and heals. On White Mage, there is always an ability that you should be using, especially during large pulls. It is called Asylum, which provides healing over time in a huge bubble, as well as increased HP recovery of your healing actions. Now to clear things up, healing magic and healing actions is slightly different. Healing magic refers to any spells that you use, and healing actions refers to both spells and abilities. We can easily find out which one is which when we hover over a skill icon. For any emergency situation, you have your benediction, which fully recovers a target's HP, which is extremely convenient. On Astrologian, we have collective unconscious, which provides damage reduction briefly, as well as a regeneration heal effect. Celestial opposition similarly provides a regeneration effect. There's also Earthly Star, which when delayed to the end of the effect, will do extra AoE damage, as well as extra healing. For emergency situation, you can use Synergy on the target, and then use Essential Dignity. Keep in mind that the lower the target's HP is, the higher the value Essential Dignity will be at a maximum value when the target has 30% HP. On Scholar, there is Sacred Soil, which you should be using between every pull. It provides a 10% damage reduction, as well as healing over time effects. Indomitability, which is a flat 400 potency heal for the entire party. Whispering Dawn gives a small heal over time effect. For emergency, we have Lustrate, and we can use Recitation, which will ensure the next heal will become critical. Pair that up with Excogitation for a pretty juicy heal. Keep in mind that most of these will require you to have your Ether Flow gauge on Scholar. I will not waste it by spending it on Energy Drain, especially when you're doing trash mobs. On Sage, we have Caracol, which provides a 10% damage reduction, as well as a heal over time effect. There is Exical, which is a flat 400 potency heal for everyone nearby. There's also Physis 2, which is a heal over time effect, as well as increased HP recovery by healing actions by 10%. For emergency situations, we don't really have much to increase our next healing ability. We do have Physis 2, which I've mentioned earlier, which increases healing actions by 10%. We also have Crasis, which increases healing actions on a single target by 20%. However, this comes at a much later level, at level 86. So we can combine either one of those with Druko, which heals the target by 600 potency flat, or Toriko, which heals the target by 700 potency and reduces target's damage taken by 10%. Keep in mind that the 
10% damage reduction cannot be stacked with Coraco. Another thing we can do is use Zoe, which increases the next healing spell by 50%, and then we can combine that with Eucrasian Diagnosis to heal up the target and give them a fat shield. And keep in mind that Zoe does not work on any healing abilities, it only works on healing spells. During certain boss mechanics, we should prepare to use our damage reduction skills or any shields that we can apply to the party. We want to do this during the boss's cast, not before or after, otherwise the effect will not be applied. Similarly, we can also do the same thing Thing for party stacks, party spreads, tank busters, etc. On White Mage, you don't really get a damage reduction skill until later on. At around level 80 is when you will get Temperance, which provides a 10% damage reduction for everyone in the party. On Astrologian, we have Collective Unconscious. On Scholar, we can use Sacred Soil as well as Sucker. On Sage, we can use Caracol as well as Eucrasian Prognosis. One thing to keep in mind is that Barry Healer is a lot weaker at recovering everyone's health overall, so it is much better to prevent any damage dealt than to reactively heal, which is more of a regen healer's strong suit. Remember to always be casting. If we need to cancel a cast, we can press escape or by moving before the cast ends, as well as try to use OGCD heals over GCD heals to keep our uptime and maximize our DPS, especially when killing trash mobs. The quicker we kill the mobs, the less we have to mitigate, the less chance of our tank dying, and a healer's AoE damage output is not to be underestimated, as it is not too far off from that of a DPS or tank's damage and occasionally we might even do more than them. There are also offensive cooldowns that you should be using. For example, on White Mage, you have your Presence of Mind. On Astrologian, you do have your Divination as well as your cards. On Sage, you have Phlegma as well as Panuma, which are great for trash mobs. However, on Scholar, you don't really have anything that useful for trash mobs. And if you hold on to these cooldowns and not use them and save them only for boss fights, then you will significantly slow down the progress of the dungeon. It is generally a good idea to understand some of the tank cooldowns, especially once that are shared on all four tanks, like Reprisal, which reduces the nearby target's damage dealt by 10%, Rampart, damage taken reduces by 20%, and Arm's Length, which slows down the nearby trash mobs' attack speed. Sometimes in dungeons, newer tanks may not know these skills that they can use, or simply that they have forgot about it completely. It is a good idea to remind them of it, but just make sure to be courteous about it, there's no need to be rude. Invulnerabilities. Each tank have their own specific invulnerability skill, which makes them unkillable unless you're doing Doing certain high-end content in Savage or Ultimates where the boss will ignore that and kill you anyways. On Paladin, there is Hollowed Ground, which makes the tank take no damage for 10 seconds. Heal as you see fit, if he's low HP, heal him. If he's healthy, you can leave him be. On Warrior, there is Home Gang, which prevents attacks from reducing your health below 1 HP, meaning that you still take damage, but you will not die. Usually, the Warrior will have Raw Intuition or Blood Wedding, which will fully heal themselves back up, especially during trash mobs. However, if the tank is below level 56, which is the level they get raw intuition, make sure to heal them back up to full. And even in higher levels, if you don't see them recovering the HP after 5 seconds or so, make sure to heal them. On Dark Knight, there is Living Dead. You want to make sure that the red hourglass icon changes to grey, otherwise do not heal them. As long as the icon remains red, you want to let them die. And after they die, the buff icon will change to Walking Dead, which is a grey icon, which for every successful weapon skill on an enemy, they will heal for 15,000 potency. This will let them heal themselves back to full. On Gunbreaker, you have Super Bolide, which works the same as Paladin's invulnerability. It makes you take no damage for 10 seconds, but your HP will become 1. We can slowly heal the Gunbreaker to a healthy level, but not too much. Slight Casting When you're casting a spell towards the end of the cast, about 0.5 to 0.3 seconds, depending on your ping, you are able to move without cancelling the cast. This will help us keep our uptime and remain as mobile as possible. Another trick you can use is place an emote near your hotbar so that you can see when you are casting a spell it is grayed out and when it lights up that means the spell has already been casted on the server side and you are free to move. As soon as it is a healer's responsibility to remove certain debuffs from any of the party members. Debuffs with a line above it indicates that it can be cleansed with Asuna and in some cases it is a doom debuff meaning that once the timer is over the doom debuff will kill that player and we have to make sure we cleanse them so that they do not die. And occasionally you might encounter a mechanic which gives everybody a doom stack and renders everyone's HP to 1. In that case, you want to make sure to heal everyone back to full, which will get rid of the doom stack. Rescue, a skill that allows you to drag one of your party members towards your current location. This can be helpful if you see them in a wrong position, which you can save them from being hit by that certain mechanic. However, I would only use this if they are really in danger of dying. Otherwise, you can leave that player be and let them learn the mechanics from
from their own mistake, mana. Make sure to use lucid dreaming regularly as it is a skill that increases mana recovery. Especially if we're keeping full up time during boss fights, you may find yourself start running out of mana. The general rule of thumb is to use your lucid dreaming once you reach below 8000 MP, especially on a job like white mage which is more mana hungry in my opinion than the other healers. Whilst you do have thin air which makes the next action cost no MP at all, in some situations we might find it useful to have some MP potions prepared beforehand. In very rare occasions where the party is dying a lot, meaning you have to revive people a lot, resurrection costs a lot of MP and you might be running extremely low on MP and that mana potion might come in handy, but again it is quite rare that it happens. So that's it for this video guys, if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more future FF14 content. Click here to check out my tank guide in a similar format.